Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, and oh me my, Lucifer has now come to an end. The sixth and final season has a lot to unpack from it, and throughout this video we're going to be breaking down the story, ending, and also what we should take from it. I don't want to waste any of your time, but obviously this video needs a big spoiler alert on it, so check out if you haven't checked it out yet. If you enjoy the breakdown then please hit the thumbs up button, and don't forget to subscribe for videos like this each and every day. Without the way, thank you for clicking this, now let's get into Lucifer Season 6. Okay, so Season 5 Part 2 ended with Lucifer getting a promotion. After telling Chloe that he loved her, Lucy beat his brother Michael and took the position of God. Now we pick up with him on the eve of ascending to the Silver City, and it's clear he's been getting hot feet as he's been constantly putting off the new role. Mirroring this, both Maze and Eve decide that they want to remain on Earth instead of going to Hell, and the pair get engaged very early on. This leaves the spot wide open for a new character to take over, who becomes somewhat of a negasonic teenage warhead in Lucifer's life. Now I just want to focus on this storyline for the first part of the video, but we will be touching upon the other plot lines towards the end, and yeah, there is a lot to talk about. I don't know if you can hear, but my nose is a bit blocked at the moment, and that's because I've just been crying after watching the finale. I mean, I, mean, I wasn't crying yet, I, 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 there was some dust in the room. Now, the season ends with Lucifer actually returning to Hell, and rather than accepting God's place in Heaven, he builds a home there, helping people alongside his partner Chloe. Season 5 told us that it was impossible to be God and to love someone, and thus Lucifer kind of gets the best of both worlds as he's with her and also healing lost souls. We know that the souls of the damned are stuck there because of their feelings of guilt, but Season 5 showed that it was possible for those trapped to ascend to Heaven. The Dam becomes a paramount character which showcases this, as he of course died last time, and throughout the season we watch as he tries to escape the confines of purgatory so that he can get into heaven. Thus Lucifer doing this is actually kinder than what he would be doing if he had have ascended. He's very much saving lost souls, and though he was initially supposed to be doing this in the Silver City, it makes way more sense to have him in the underworld, carrying out an action that will save everyone. Those people are of course trapped there, and there was no way for God to bring them up, as it would be against free will, therefore it's better for everyone that Lucifer just sort of coaches them along. As we predicted in our Season 5 video, Amenadiel actually ends up becoming God, but he puts new measures in place that will remove the mystery from the mysterious ways. The angels will now walk amongst the humans in order to see our behaviours firsthand, which will make them carry out their tasks better overall. Now how we get there is quite an interesting journey, and we see the idea of parental relationships brought up quite a lot. After seeing one side of a magician double act get murdered, we learn that the culprit was one of their sons, angered that he wasn't allowed to take over the legacy and sell it off to Netflix. They are looking for shows at the moment, so yeah, you could have probably got in there. Now this makes Lucifer question if he's truly worthy to step into his father's shoes, and it sets off a whole relationship with his own child. It's sort of like poetry, they rhyme as we see that, in the same way his father was God, and Lucy ruled over hell, that when Lucy becomes a god, his daughter Aurora does too. After making somewhat of an alliance with Dan, the crazy murder angel travels to Earth with him, and here the truth is revealed. Throughout the season we learn that she's actually from the future, and that she's back because Lucy abandoned both her and Chloe. A big question hangs over the season, namely why Lucifer would leave, and it becomes somewhat of a self-fulfilling prophecy as we watch it all play out. Now this idea of absent fathers was of course mirrored in his own dad, who ended up leaving his kids to their own devices. His daughter's journey very much mirrors Lucifer's when you think about it, and much like him, she journeyed from hell to our world in order to confront her father. However, whereas God abandoned his kids, Lucifer states that he won't, and the second half of the season revolves around the mystery of why he decided to go. Hell, even the nickname of Lucy being short for Lucifer, is reflected in Aurora getting her nickname Rory, the both of which are of course normally used as names of their gender opposites. Now we discover lots of things about the future, namely that when Chloe died that Lucifer wasn't there at her side, and we actually see this play out in the finale. With heaven not having someone on the throne, the apocalypse starts to happen due to angels answering everyone's prayers and making a mess of it. I've been praying that this video gets a lot of thumbs up, so yeah, make sure you do that. Now because of this, Lucifer needs to make a choice and either stay with his daughter or take on his duties. Vincent is inadvertently freed, and to make matters worse, Chloe finds out she's pregnant with Rory, which puts further pressure on Lucifer. This all comes to a head in episode 9, and after Lucifer says his good cries, 
Rory forgives him, which finally allows him to move on to his next task guilt-free. This is mirrored in Dan, who after possessing Vincent gets a heart-to-heart -heart with his daughter, and he finally goes to heaven. Unfortunately, this frees Vincent who kidnaps Chloe, and he takes her to 10th and Swanson, which is the fateful location that Lucifer disappeared. The final episode called Partners Till the End has a lot of meaning, and Vincent ends up taking blades from Rory's wings, which he turns into a weapon. Leads to one of the best action scenes in the entire series, but unfortunately Chloe is stabbed in the charge, and this leads to Lucifer facing off against Vincent himself. We realise that his greatest desire is to see Rory grow up, and not being able to do this will be somewhat his own personal hell. Lucifer agrees to give his own life to save her, but Rory breaks free, calls Lucifer dad for the first time, and she goes almost full mask off mode, nearly revealing her devil face. However, Lucifer convinces her not to kill him so that she doesn't go down the dark path that he did, and just before the darker side takes over, she spares Vincent's life. Unfortunately for him, he still tries to kill Lucy one last time, but Chloe arrives and then shoots him. Instead of what Dan saw, he just witnesses darkness, and we do see him in hell for the final few scenes. Now, though it seems like a happy ending, due to Rory not disappearing, we realise that the future hasn't been changed. However, the group conclude that Lucifer pointing Dan in a direction that got him into heaven helped him a lot and this is also reflected in Rory. They come to the conclusion that her travelling back in time was so that he could heal her and that in hell he'll be able to do more good. Lucifer is very much a character that knows what it's like to fall and rise and he realises that he's been put on this path by his father. Hell doesn't need a helper, it needs a healer and he goes into the underworld in order to save the lost souls and sinners. The time loop is very much complete with the future having impact on the past and the past also creating the future. Rory returns to her own time and Lucifer and Chloe have their final farewell for now. I'm not crying, you're crying and we see a Amenadiel in heaven ushering forth his new plan. Ella's STEM initiative is launched and Dan and Charlotte reunite in the afterlife. Chloe returns to the LAPD, Amenadiel and Linda celebrate Charlie's first birthday and to add to the surprises, he also gets his wings. Maze and Eve work together to take on criminals, and the group all welcome baby Rory to the world. After a big time jump, we see the story that Rory told us about, and join Chloe on her deathbed. Rory returns to this moment from the past, and thanks her mother for allowing her to go through this journey her own way. Rather than having any regrets or guilt, which is something that a lot of people have on their deathbed, Chloe says she wouldn't change a thing, and we watch in the afterlife as she partners up with Lucifer. We catch him in a duplicate of Linda's therapy room, and he counsels Reese Getty, who you might remember from earlier in the series. Joined by Vincent, we watch as he's truly helping people, and he and Chloe kiss as they start the rest of eternity together. It's the perfect way to end the season, and we close out to Welcome to the Black Parade by My Chemical Romance. This song is about a patient looking back on his life, and the memories that he has of it. Death appears to him and manifests as his happiest ones, and the lyrics we'll carry on carry a lot of meaning, as we know that this is the end, but that the characters are going on to happier times without us. It really knocks it out of the park, and this is an amazing send off for the characters. Now, as for the season as a whole, I think this got better the longer that it went on, and though it started off a bit slow, by the end, I was sad to see it go. Most of the seasons so far have had fun episodes that sort of break the fourth wall, and whereas in the past we got musical ones, here we get a full animated one called Yabba Dabba Do Me. Drawn in the style of a Hanna-Barbera cartoon, it looks incredible and feels like one of the high points in the series. It's stuff like that which is why I'm going to be sad to see the series go, and it's a very bittersweet finale that I hope isn't the end, even though I know it is, but, but you can always hope. Now juxtaposing this fun stuff, we also get way more serious plot lines involving Amenadiel as he deals with racism and corruption within the force. Dan also has a great arc too, that reminded me a lot of Randall and Hopkirk deceased. In case you haven't heard of it, and I am showing my age, it was a cop sitcom from the 70s in which a policeman's partner died and he came back as a ghost to help his buddy solve crimes. Now though all the plot lines come together to make a really strong send off, I do feel that earlier parts of the season fall into the usual murder of the week trope, and in all honesty, I just don't find them all that interesting. Clocking in at 10 hours, I do think that the show could have focused more on the main plot points and cut down its runtime to tell a slightly swifter story. I know it dropped today, but I actually got early access to the season a couple of weeks ago, 
And when I think back on those early parts, they are by far the most forgettable. Now the main things that will stick with me are the sentimental ones, such as Lucifer and his daughter's relationship, as well as that final episode. It does feel like the finale that we've been wanting, and it's difficult to fault that final hour at all. I am judging the series as a whole though, but if I was just going off that episode, it would be a 10 out of 10. However, looking at the series and taking everything into account, though it ended really, really well, there were still some slower parts, and thus it gets an 8 out of 10. Now obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts, so make sure you leave all the devil in the details in the comments below. We are running a competition right now and giving away 3 copies of the Zack Snyder DC Trilogy on the 30th of September, and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the season. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month, and the winners of the last one are on screen right now, so if that's you, then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of the Matrix trailer, which will be linked on screen right now. We went over the brand new look and pointed out all the easter eggs we could find, so it's definitely worth checking out if you want to know more. Without the way, thank you for sticking through the video. I've been Paul, you take care, and I'll see you next time. Have a good weekend, and peace.